Today I want to talk to you about the power of your story and the power that your story can have if you tell it to someone within your home, maybe within your neighbourhood or in the wider world. I want to take you back a few years in Johannesburg. We're in a private home in a beautiful room. The ceilings are high, the windows are large and they're open slightly. Outside, you can see and smell the manicured lawn and you can hear the turtle doves cooing. Inside are two men talking. Their chairs are close together, their knees almost touching, and their heads are bowed as they listen to each other in mutual respect. One of the men is a teenager, young man, and the other is old with a shock of white hair, and you can see his years and the frailty of his body. The younger man is called Henry Luyombia, and the older man is called Nelson Mandela. I don't need to tell you Nelson Mandela's story because you all know it, so I would like to focus on Henry's story. Henry, back then, 19 years old, a twinkle in his eye, a typical teenager, most comfortable in his jeans and t-shirt. I adore Henry, except for one thing, he's an Arsenal fan. I'm a Spurs fan, but we've got over that. And he spends his days working in his community in Uganda with the fishing villages in Lake Victoria. He works with young people who are affected by HIV and AIDS. And this in a day when there is no treatment available and people are dying in droves. I had asked Henry to come and speak with Nelson Mandela for a documentary that I was producing for MTV. And Henry spoke to Mandela about when Mandela first started to fight apartheid. Did he really believe that he would ever see the end of it? Because Henry, as an AIDS activist, well, he's exhausted. He's ready to give up. Henry has been personally affected by AIDS. His family, his father, his brother, his sister, and his two aunts have all died because of AIDS. And Henry himself is HIV positive. Now, why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because of the impact that Henry's life has had on me I am standing on this TEDx stage because of Henry, but also on the lives of millions of people around the world who've never even heard of Henry. Because when Henry told me his story all those years ago, what I saw in front of me was this incredible human who had the passion and the ability to make a change in his community, but he had no resource at all. It was because I heard Henry's story that I realised that what I could do was to be able to use the MTV brand and we set up a foundation called the MTV Staying Alive Foundation to do exactly what Henry inspired me to do. Today, we are set up to ensure that young people are able to make informed choices about their own sexual and reproductive health. Now today is World AIDS Day. But for me, personally, it's particularly special because it is the 20th anniversary of the MTV Staying Alive Foundation. But I've spent some time this year looking back and thinking about how HIV has been portrayed in the media all those years ago. I think back to those 1980s headlines such as AIDS shows God is unhappy with gays or UK threatened by gay virus plague. These were headlines of unapologet unapologetic homophobia, and I wonder today how things have changed. Well, certainly, treatment is, for the most part, affordable, available, and accessible. But the prejudice does remain. Let's try this. I want you all in this room to imagine that every single one of you are a young, black, American, gay or bisexual man. 
Well, today, you have a one in two chance of being HIV positive in your lifetime. Now, I want all the women in this room to imagine that you're an adolescent girl between the ages of 10 to 19, somewhere in Africa. And all the men in this room to imagine that you're an adolescent boy. Well, if you look at the opposite sex, as an adolescent girl across Africa, you have an up to eight times chance more likely of being HIV positive than if you're an adolescent boy. But we know that HIV doesn't discriminate. It can affect anyone, from Henry to you to me. So why then are there still certain sectors of society who are still more likely to become HIV, HIV positive? Well, it's because of social marginalization and prejudice. It's the marginalization of certain sectors of society that means that some people are more likely to become HIV positive. This time last year, Webster's Dictionary's word of the year was feminism. If it was up to me, my word for this year would be a word that unfortunately has become a loaded gun in these contemporary campaigns, such as Me Too. You know, Me Too is all about trying to tell stories to tackle um, the normalization of uh, sexual harassment and sexual violence. But this word should not be a, it should not be something that is looked negatively upon. The word of the year is story. We've been telling stories since time began. And we think at MTV Staying Alive that telling a story is really powerful. I mean, today, you can reach millions of people around the world just at the touch of a button with your mobile phone. Now, at MTV Staying Alive, we use MTV Sugar, which I'm happy to hear some of you have heard of, this gritty TV drama in which to be able to put these, these stories across. We've produced it in Kenya, in Nigeria, in South Africa. We're moving to Cote d'Ivoire and India as well. But the real essence of MTV Sugar is not just storytelling, but storytelling around real people. Now, a couple of years ago, I was in the Western Cape, and I was doing some focus groups before we started writing our series in South Africa. I was in a school, it was a pretty rural area. There was about 40 girls and boys around the ages of 14 to 16. And I was asking them if it was up to them, if they could help me write the storylines for MTV Sugar, what story would they have in there? And right from the back of the room, I heard this chair scrape back and this girl wearing her gray school uniform, her cardigan sort of slouched off her shoulders, her skirt rolled up a couple of times at the waistband, oh yeah. She comes marching down the aisle and she comes up and she stands next to me on this little stage and she says, I can tell you what you need to do in MTV Sugar. Someone has to die. So I said, oh, okay, well, how do they die? Do they die because of AIDS? Do they die um, through gender-based violence? Why, why do they have to die? And she looked at me with this amazing scorn and eye-rolling that only a teenage girl can do. <laughs> and she said, I don't care how they die. That's not my problem. That's your problem. <laughs> I was so put in my place. And I said, OK, if you're not going to tell me how they die, tell me why do they have to die? And she said, well, you've just been telling me how MTV Sugar reflects our life. Well, in our life, someone always dies. Now, I don't want to give away a storyline, but if you haven't yet seen MTV Sugar Down South, someone dies. And it's because of what she told me. Because we have to work these stories into what we're showing. And I know that I stand here from a position of power and privilege by being able to talk about other people's stories with MTV Sugar. But it's in the retelling of these stories that they have impact. It's not just the storytelling either. It's also who we work with. So in front of the camera, first series of MTV Sugar in Kenya, we discovered a little known actress called Lupita Nyong'o. But keep your eyes open, because in MTV Sugar Down South, 
we do, we do public auditions for all of our work. And in MTV Sugar Down South, we have this incredible actress called Sam K. Makiba, who we found in the public auditions. She had never acted before, and she is carrying some of our hardest, toughest storylines. And behind the camera, we are working, our director of our new series in Nigeria is an amazing woman called Tope Ocean, and she's just been nominated for Director of the Year. The cast is local, the crew is local, the music is local, but the stories are far-reaching with global impact. And I think back to those 1980s story headlines where, which are dehumanizing and negative. And I think that what we're trying to do with MTV Sugar is tell stories that are around humanity and inclusion and understanding. Look. Probably the one thing that we all have in common is our differences. We all come from different backgrounds and histories and cultures. But the one thing that we do share is empathy. And if we can use empathy to break down those barriers of stigma, we can make a change. MTV Sugar is fun, it's dynamic, it's on fleek, and it is full of life. <laughs> As it should be, because that's how young people are. But it also makes a difference. Now, here's the bit. I can give you the whole science bit. I can tell you that the World Bank evaluated MTV Sugar, and they show that young people who watch MTV Sugar are twice as likely to get tested for HIV than if you haven't seen it. But let me tell you a true story about one of our actors, Emmanuel Ikubezi. He plays the character Femi in a few of our series. And one day, Emmanuel was stopped in the street. This is a true story. And this girl came up to me. She said, Femi, because everyone knows Emmanuel as Femi, Femi, I want to say thank you to you for saving my life. And she told him that her and her boyfriend, they'd been going out a couple of months. They hadn't had sex yet, but they were planning it. They were going on a weekend away where they were going to have sex for the first time. And hey, we've all done it before. Well, OK. <laughs> I, speaking for myself. <laughs> Um, and a few weeks before that, they were watching the latest episode of MTV Sugar. The one, and again, I apologize for any story giveaways, but the one where Femi finds out that he's HIV positive. And at the end of it, they started having this conversation. She's curled up in his arms and she says to him, I have been too scared to go and get tested for HIV, but will you come with me? Let's do what Femi's done in this episode. Can we go and get tested together? And they did. And her boyfriend found out that he's HIV positive. And that's why she wanted to say thank you to Emmanuel for saving her life. It's not Emmanuel who saved her life. It's not even Femi, his character, who was the mechanism for putting across that message. But the fact is that that's what MTV Sugar does, is allow people to have those conversations that they've just never been able to have before. Now, I think back to Henry and how brave he was by telling his story for the first time to Nelson Mandela, as well as a TV crew and the whole TV audience around the world that were going to watch it. And the way that I like to think about Henry's story is it's a bit like the roots of a baobab tree that have spread and spread and spread and touched millions of young people around the world. So perhaps what you can do after hearing Henry's story is think about your own story even the embarrassing bits that you've never told anyone. And think about who you can tell your story to and about the impact that it can make, or maybe by listening to someone else's story. And I should tell you that Henry's story continues. I've actually just come back from New York where I've been with him for the week. I think he's watching. I don't know if we're live, but he's planning to watch. So hi, Henry. He is happy and healthy. He has a beautiful partner and the most gorgeous two-year-old boy called Leighton. He is unfortunately still an Arsenal fan. <laughs> um, but he's also the vice chair of the MTV Staying Alive Foundation. And his work continues to inspire us every single day. So I want to leave you with the words that Nelson Mandela said to Henry all those years ago in that beautiful room in Johannesburg when he said, Henry, 
It is the stigma that kills human beings, sometimes more than the disease itself. Thank you very much. <laughs>